Um, it's just I don't want to book the white one in case this guy replies. Which is Espace Gris? Yeah. Because it's, 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 it's cooler, so. Yeah. I'm seeing a, a 9 to 5 that's already here. Um, let me just see if they paid. Give me like 30 minutes. We're going to try to contact them in to see if he's, if he's actually taking it or if it's a situation like you that you tried it and something happened and then we'll call you back. No. Okay, okay so. thank you. Have a great one. So we're going to have to find another idea. Yeah. Photography. I've spent so many hours, days, months, years trying to nail this art with practically any camera out there. I've gone from shooting on my iPhone 6S to a Canon SL2, then made the jump to an A7 Mark III, which then led me to an A7 Mark IV. In between, I've been enjoying shooting with cameras on the iPhones, mostly RAW, and I've been recently enjoying using the Fuji X-E4. But you see, after doing the day in the life video I did a couple of weeks ago and spending some time in London, I've been able to really nail this whole S23 Ultra photography down. I've managed to come up with the best settings that work for my style, my look, and the way I like shooting. We really wanted to book a studio, but it wasn't possible. You guys seem to really like the photos so much online, so I guess I told myself might as well go out and shoot, so I can at least share with you my photography settings on the S23 Ultra. Look, as a whole, the camera app by itself is super basic. There really isn't much to it aside from enabling the flash, setting a timer, choosing the scales as well as the megapixels you want to shoot with, and even things like enabling live photos and using filters. But that's not what we want or need to make compositions look better. Yes, using focus enhancer can be fun, playing with different focal lengths is being one step closer to the end goal, and scanning text is definitely very useful, but the camera app as it is needs a bit of work from your end. That is, if you want to take really cool pictures, of course. The camera settings is where things begin for us. It's a starter point to make sure you start taking advantage of these lenses. The first setting I recommend disabling is Scene Optimizer. Yes, it's nice that Scene Optimizer can identify what you're looking at and adjust settings to take the best pictures, but we want to have full control over our compositions. I think shot suggestions for what we want is not needed at all, and disabling QR codes is just a matter of preference. Now, within the pictures section, all you need to do here is click on advanced picture options, make sure HEIF is turned off, and that pro mode picture formats are set to RAW and JPEG, because when shooting in pro mode, you're gonna want to make sure the pictures are being developed in a JPEG format and a RAW format. As for the watermark and the swipe up shutter gesture, just leave them as it is, unless you like creating GIFs, of course. As for everything under the selfies and video tab, no need to touch them as they won't really affect the quality of your pictures. Instead, focus on maybe using something like tracking autofocus. I actually think it's a nice feature as it allows you to lock the focus on a selected subject even if they move. So this will ensure your subject is always in focus. However, if you ever need to change the brightness, you can just hold down the square and slide the slider left or right. Grid lines, keep them on. This is a must for coming up with the best compositions. Location tags can be fun for memories. I actually like enabling these. Under shooting methods, the only thing I like enabling is the floating shutter button. It makes things super easy because I can move the shutter button anywhere on the screen. It almost makes the press volume keys to take pictures or record option feel useless at times. I've got to say, when it comes to the show palm setting, that's actually a pretty cool setting to enable and it can come in handy. The last settings page, I very much suggest you tweak it's the settings to keep. Enabling camera mode and selfie angle are a must. It can be really frustrating to have to readjust all your app settings just because you accidentally closed the app or turned off your screen. And the last one is high picture resolutions. It'll keep your high megapixel settings applied as default resolutions, even if you close the camera app. And you might be wondering, is that it? No, it's not. There's actually a lot more to discover, like for example, unlocking extra settings that for some reason don't come already pre-installed. And I say pre-installed because Camera Assistant is an app you need to download from the Samsung store. 
this app is what allows you to take that extra final step just before you start shooting in manual mode. So in short, you unlock a whole new page that allows you to have a bit more control over your pictures. Like for example, disabling auto HDR. On my end, I've always found that the auto dynamic range can sometimes look too aggressive. The same with picture softening, whether it's on medium or high, I like keeping this off. Another setting that I never enable is the auto lens switching. There's probably nothing more annoying out there than having a camera automatically choose your focal length based on your composition, especially at low light. Because I'm still relatively new to Android, specifically Samsung and One UI, I've realized that the major complaint when it comes to the camera is the shutter lag and motion blur. Like if you read the forums, there are a lot of people unhappy with the way this phone introduces motion blur. However, on my end, it's not something I've experienced yet. Whether the quick tap shutter option was on or off or whether I adjusted the capture speed to prioritize speed, my photography experience has been good till now, but those settings are there to use and I recommend you use them if you encounter unwanted motion blur. I do prefer my images looking sharp, even if it means sacrificing a bit of image quality, so I prioritize speed just in case. Logically, if you guys think about it, image quality is mostly affected in low light photography since this is when the processor and the sensor have to work the hardest to produce the best image quality. After a month of using this phone as my daily, I think I can safely say that shooting at 50 megapixels is well more worth it than at 200 megapixels. Don't get me wrong, shooting with 200 megapixels is fantastic. Most of the time it tends to yield sharp images and delivers great quality, colors look vibrant, contrasty images and whatnot, but we are talking about 200 megapixels where it can take the camera a bit of time to capture the images. So it makes it easy to introduce a blurry image since any small movement while processing can cause that. And you might be wondering, why does that happen? Well, while Samsung do release updates to make things better, you have to remember that these type of photos produce file sizes of about 20 megabytes per image, which is why one of the reasons I like shooting at 50 megapixels is because of the file sizes. Not only that, but at 50 megapixels, you're still using that 200 megapixel sensor. So you're still benefiting in some ways of that 200 megapixels, except the photos can be processed a bit quicker and the file sizes are smaller. Remember that in contrast to shooting at 12 megapixels, zooming into objects is done by using a digital crop within the same lens. Like it doesn't actually use the other lenses to readjust in between focal lengths like at 12 megapixels. And this also includes macro photography. Now that you've chosen the base proper settings and the proper megapixels to shoot with, you can either start shooting as it is or try shooting manually, like more specifically with complete manual camera settings. How? With Expert RAW or Pro Mode, but I have a tendency to like shooting in Expert RAW. While this is a bit of a contradicting statement as a photographer, let me explain to you why some people like using Pro Mode instead. Within your camera app, if you guys actually click the more tab, you'll realize that the actual camera app delivers a few more options. And one of them is Pro Mode. Pro Mode, which comes natively installed unlike Expert RAW, is an app that is still able to capture raw images by shooting manual, except that it behaves a bit more like a traditional camera, meaning that your raw images do not get processed after your shot was taken. In other words, it doesn't reduce noise, unsharpens, add vibrance, and so on. It feeds you the image as it is. On the other hand, Expert RAW not only allows you to also have manual control over your camera app, but it lets you shoot in 16-bit RAW. The files are a bit processed, so it isn't true RAW, but has amazing dynamic range and reduces the amount of sharpening that the stock app sort of applies. On top of that, Samsung and Adobe have struck a deal to integrate Lightroom as the default image editor for photos taken with Expert RAW. Essentially, the app really allows you to have full freedom and have everything happen within a single pipeline from an idea to creating to editing. I'm no Peter McKinnon, by the way, so this isn't a camera basics video. The goal here is to show you how the settings within this app can be tweaked so you can shoot manual and achieve your desired composition. First, the settings tab. It is pretty much the same as the regular camera app. There's nothing here for you to change except maybe making sure auto HDR is disabled and the grid lines are enabled. Other than settings, the top menu bar includes the timer, the megapixels you want to use, the metering mode, as well as a multiple exposure feature and the astrophotography settings. 
two features that can only be used at 12 megapixels. Because I set everything in manual, more specifically the white balance, the metering mode is not useful here. The same thing can be said about EV in this menu because of ISO and shutter speed being set to manual. Now this whole section here is where you can tweak your ISO, your shutter speed, white balance and even focus. And the focus feature is nice in the S23 Ultra because like my Sony camera, it has a peak and display feature that allows you to check if your subject is in focus. On top of this menu, you can change the digital zoom when shooting at 50 megapixels or change the lens you wish to use if shooting at 12 megapixels. The app also allows you to set custom profiles like, for example, I have one for indoor shooting and another one for outside shots. These just allow me to get up and running super quickly. There's also a histogram for exposure levels, which is super useful. It definitely allows you to see if your highlights are peaking and so on. Altogether, really allows you to take insane pictures so you can either use Lightroom Mobile to edit them or Lightroom Classic within your PC. I don't wanna make this a video editing like portion of the video or like to the video because I don't wanna make the video too long. I just wanna show you what the S23 is capable of because it's absolutely crazy. If you buy your own LUTs or you have LUTs on this side, um, it can be really powerful. I'm not going to be selling mine because they're not ready. I don't feel comfortable selling that to you guys yet, but let me show you. If I take uh, the JR Orange, which is one of the LUTs you use at the office, look at this. It's insane. It's absolutely crazy, you know? And then maybe I can bring in, wait, let me just adjust the contrast just a bit. And what I usually like doing here is linear gradient, bring those lights on top a bit more into the picture and kill the floor just a bit focus on the car and I know I have vignetting here, which I just want to get rid of. And then maybe fix that, crop this for Instagram format, for example. And look at that, that's a whole picture right there. It, you can't even tell this was taken with a phone, which is absolutely insane. You can even brush the car because I feel like it has a bit too much clarity. You know, the, the Samsung likes to over sharpen things just a bit and i am not a fan of that there you go look at that now that's a proper picture i really really like that it's crazy so take a look at the before and take a look at the after nuts right like that's absolutely nuts uh, another picture i wanted to show you guys is this one that i edited before take a look at the after look at look at that silver it's crazy it looks insane the level of detail is nuts very capable i'm very 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 impressed with this phone to be honest with you guys look i'm by no means a real photographer i'm just sharing what i know you guys seem to like the pictures i take based on the comments and dms i receive so i thought i would share about them here more specifically with the s23 ultra which is such a capable phone i really wanted to rent a studio to make this video happen but hopefully going around downtown made more sense to you if you have any questions let me know our lots are still not for sale yet but once we finalize them they might just be i'll talk to you guys soon take care